Have you ever heard anybody talk about old world versus new world wines? <laughs> Do you have a clue what they're talking about? That's what we're going to look at in this video. The difference between old world and new world wines. The distinction between old world wines and new world wines are commonly misunderstood. Many people use the term broadly saying that they prefer old world to new world wines without really truly knowing the difference between the styles or what makes a wine old world versus new world. That's what we're going to do. We're going to take the mystery out of all of this. In this video, we're going to look at four key differences that will simplify this whole old world versus new world thing. The key differences are number one, what do you mean by old world and new world? We can also call this location. Number two, rules for making wine. Some people call this the regulatory differences. Number three, names and labels on bottles. And number four, you're really going to want to know this, the taste difference. Plus, there'll be a great bonus at the end of this video, and I'll tell you how this will all have an impact on you. Uh, keep in mind, at any time, if you like what you hear, click like, subscribe, and hit the little bell so you'll be notified when there's a new post. Are you ready? Here we go. Number one, location. Old world wines refer to those made in countries considered the birthplace of wine. This includes the Middle East, the Tigris Euphrates River Valley, which is known as the Fertile Crescent, and then also Europe. Uh, the Fertile Crescent is Syria, Iran, Iraq, uh, Lebanon, Israel, and Georgia. Uh, but the reality is most of the time we think in terms of just Europe, primarily France, Italy, Spain, Portugal, Germany, and actually to a lesser degree, Austria, Greece, uh, Switzerland, Hungary, Romania, and maybe even Croatia. On the other hand, New World wines refer to wines made in the colonies, plus. Now that would be the US, South America, including Argentina, Chile, and Brazil, plus Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa. Oh, oh yeah, and plus China. Uh, actually, anywhere else not considered Old World or Europe. Number two is the rules for making wine, or the regulatory differences. Old world wine producers have been making wine for thousands of years. Accordingly, they're, they're tied to quite a bit of tradition. In virtually all these countries, there are strict government regulations of what type of grapes, uh, what type of grapes may be grown, how wine can be made, how much wine they may produce at any one time, and thousands of more laws, literally thousands of laws, rules, and regulations. <laughs> Actually, one of the craziest and one of my favorite wine laws is in France's region of chateauneuf de pape There, so as not to disturb the vines, grapes, or the tranquility of growing some of the best grapes in the entire world, UFOs are not permitted to land. <laughs> seriously? No, seriously. In the New World, uh, the US, South America, Australia, uh, there are enormous differences. There are virtually no regulations or government guidelines telling winemakers the types of grapes they may grow, uh, where they can grow, the density per acre or per hectare, techniques used in making the wine, including the use of oak barrels or the lack of use of oak barrels. Uh, you grow as much or as little as you want whenever and wherever you want. Winemakers and producers can be as creative as they want to be. The focus of attention for winemakers is twofold. How can you allow the wine to speak the absolute best way it can? And number two, what does the consumer want? It's basically the difference between stringent laws, rules, regulations, and restrictions to ensure historic consistency versus the Wild West show. How are you doing there? Is this information helpful? If it is, write taste in the comments below. Now, here is a Rioja. This tells you it's from Rioja region of Spain and is made from the Tempranillo grape. Here's a Chianti. Actually, it's a Chianti Classico. 
And this tells you it's made from the Sangiovese grape. Now here's something else that I think is really cool. You see this little red rooster? That tells you this wine has met all the governmental regulations and is not just from the region of Chianti, but the small village of Chianti. When I see this red rooster, I know it's a good Chianti. Now this could be a bit confusing for new wine drinkers in the US, but for those from the old world or have been drinking wine for a while, this is all relatively simple. People from Europe have been drinking wine for a thousand to 2,000 years, even longer. Knowing their wine by the people and place is all second nature to them. In the new world, wines are named after the varietal of grape grown and produced, the grape actually inside the bottle. So you have a Cabernet Sauvignon. This tells you it's a <laughs> Cabernet Sauvignon. Now actually, in the US, even though it says Cabernet or Chardonnay or anything else on the label, it only has to be 76% of that particular grape. Now, here's a Chardonnay. And here's a Pinot Gris. Being able to read the name on the label is easier for the new wine consumers in the US. You know, we say, I like Chardonnay or I like Cabernet, or Pinot Noir, but we're beginning to understand how important place and people are. I hear more people saying things like, I like my cabs from Paso Robles more than cabs from Napa or Sonoma. Now Paso is in California, south of Napa and Sonoma. Its wines are a lot fruitier than the cabs from Napa or Sonoma. Or, you know, you might also have people say, I like New Zealand Sauvignon Blancs more than California or French Sauvignon Blancs. You know, even though it's easier to know the grape, as we're getting more astute at tasting the differences in place, we are migrating towards wines that fit our palates much better. Number four, style of winemaking or the taste difference. Generally speaking, old world wines are more subtle in color, aroma, and flavor. They're not as bold or expressive. Uh, they have more earthy flavors and minerality to them. Uh, they're lighter bodied, more restrained, have more complex flavors, are lower in alcohol. Also, there's not as much oak in, in old world wines. They're a lot more gentle. Many prefer old world wines because of the flavor, history, and heritage. To them, there's something romantic about holding a glass of wine that's been made the same way for centuries. Generally, New World wines are bolder, more intense, have more fruit flavors, higher in alcohol, and are fuller bodied. Uh, its taste is less complex. For new wine drinkers, it's easier to pick up on the primary fruits, and because of its fruit forward nature, new wine drinkers have a tendency to migrate towards new wines a whole lot quicker. A new world producers have not been making wine as long. There's not the history in making wine, much less great world-class wines. However, they've come a long way, an incredibly long way. To summarize the taste difference, it's sort of like the concept of dating. Old world wines are like courting. Everything's slow and easy. Over time, you get to know one another. Eventually, you take them home to family, to mama. New World Wine is like <laughs> speed dating. Everything is up front. There's the introduction, hopefully great chemistry, then my place or yours. <laughs> well, there you have it. Everything you need to know about Old World versus New World Wines. Well, almost. Hang in there for the quick bonus at the end. I'm going to share the secret behind what producers are doing to give you the wines you really want. But first, thanks so much for investing the time to watch this video. If you got something out of it, let me know in the comments below. Also, hit subscribe and the little bell to be notified when there's a new post. And share this video if it was helpful to you. I'd really appreciate it. All right, are you ready for the bonus? Since the end of World War II, and especially since the late 1960s, the wine world has been transformed. Grape varieties are becoming increasingly dispersed. You would have never thought a Pinot Noir would have grown outside of France 
in the United States, New Zealand, Italy, Germany, Australia, or even Chile. It would have blown your mind to think a world-class Pinot Noir would be coming out of a place called the Willamette Valley in Oregon. Oregon. The migration of grape varieties is paralleled by the migration of people. A New Zealand Pinot Noir now may be made by an Australian educated Croatian winemaker who has worked extensively in Burgundy, Greece, and Bulgaria. Today, a glass of wine is considerably more complex when it comes to the social, cultural, educational, and environmental influences on the wine that there used to be. What that means to you and me is some new world wine enologists or winemakers and producers are making old world style wines. Wines that taste more earthy and with more minerality, not as fruity or full body as a typical new world wine. Interestingly, we're finding that some old wine producers are doing the exact same thing, just in reverse. Now, part of the reason for this is the U.S. has become the number one wine consuming nation on the planet. Old world enologists are making wines taste like new world wines, more fruity. These producers are beginning to make more in your face style wines. In addition to that, old world producers are beginning to put the grape varietals on the labels, particularly if it's a single varietal. See, this is a French wine and it's got Chardonnay on it. And this Italian wine here has three grape varietals written on it. <laughs> well, there you have it. Everything you need to know about old world versus new world wines, plus the bonus. Thanks again for joining me. Make sure you watch these other insightful videos. And remember, hit like and subscribe if you got something out of this video. Until next time, cheers.